Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Shred Gaming Tentacom video, we're going to be discussing Ashes of the Singularity, where Ryzen is being shown as running at 4 GHz, and naturally this also means we have some performance information of the processor, at least in theory, because there are a couple of concerns that both myself and numerous other people have with these benchmarks on the internet. In other words, they may not be 100% legitimate, but we're going to go into that in this particular video. Both Rod and Curtis messaged me this exact same article within the space of just a few seconds of one another, so I'm going to give them a both joint credit. But before we get into Ashley's the Singularity, there is another Ryzen thing I did want to touch on, and that, well, actually, there's two. I lied to you. There's two little other Ryzen things, but they're both pretty quick. The first comes to us from GDC. More specifically, there's a session being held there optimizing for AMD Ryzen CPUs. And it is, of course, presented by AMD. Unsurprisingly, it's not exactly going to be presented by Intel, is it? Anywho, up until now, it did not, at least until my knowledge, it did not have a date on it. It is, however, now going to be the 2nd of March, which is a Thursday, 4 to 5 p.m. And it is, of course, a sponsored session. The idea here, here, here excuse me, is that you're going to be learning how to optimize for the Ryzen slash Zen microarchitecture, including power management and code XLL profile. So in theory, that's good if you're a developer, but if you're not a developer and you're just, you know, a gamer or whatever you do, not taking anything away from you, but um, if that's your shtick, why are you interested in this? Well, there is something that's very uh, curious, and that is the date, because this is the supposed date that we're going to be seeing Ryzen released on the shelves, or at least very close to it. And in fact, this um, this session has been edited numerous times. In fact, at one point, I'm pretty sure it said something like, and it's, this is not a verbatim quote, but something like the recently released Ryzen processor, and that was quickly edited, and now, of course, we've actually got the date. So it looks like very early March is going to be the date that Ryzen is launched. I wouldn't say it's going to be earlier than that simply because I would see a lot more leaks by now. Like, if a whole bunch of reviewers had it and they don't, um, from what I'm being told by other sources, uh, basically we would know about it by now. Anywho, let's talk about the other little thing. And that is a smaller thing for many of you because I don't think a lot of folks now are going to be running Windows 7 for the prospect of gaming anyway but AMD have confirmed that Windows 7 will be getting Ryzen drivers very short quote yes we have drivers for Windows 7 today on the AM4 platform because we enabled 7th generation A series for Dell, HP, Lenovo last year with our launch of the AMD 7th generation A series processors of course that does not necessarily mean Windows 8 slash 8.1 is going to be supported and I would personally wait and see what happens with the performance under Windows 7 before you rush out and buy it. Arguably, I would say that there's not much reason now not to go for Windows 10 unless you have very specific conditions not to. For example, let's say you're running a dual boot machine because, oh, I don't know, like an application just refuses to run properly under Windows 10, in which case, fine, I can understand that. But other than that, you know, for just gaming or for production or whatever, and you don't really need the legacy OS, I would personally suggest at this point, Windows 10 is really the way to go. That's just my personal opinion on what's saying to upgrade, but that's just what I would do. And, well, I have. So now we're going to get into the meat of it. The tasty, tasty, delicious meats. I'm not sure why I went that far, but still. So... This one I'm a bit on the fence about, and I'll go first of all into the leak, or supposed leak, and then I'll give you my concerns with it, and why I also believe it may be genuine, because I'm, I'm very much on the fence. So, there are folks over on PC Shopping Forums who managed to grab a screenshot of a benchmark which popped up on the internet of Ashes of the Singularity. Now, just for... Um, completeness sake, it's worth noting this is not the first time Ash of the Singularity has had a leak, either from Ryzen or from Polaris. We've seen a couple of them, and I believe Vegas also had a couple as well. Okay, with that said, 
you can clearly see that the CPU, uh, the GPU, by the way, is a Titan X. I'll get into one of the reasons that I believe that this means that AMD are probably not the folks who did that, uh, did this. But the other one is the CPU. Now, it says AMD Horizon with a fairly lengthy name with 40 slash 36 underscore Y. Now, the fact that it says 36, sorry, 40 slash 36 is an indication of clock speed. So the 4 0 equals, you know, 4 gigahertz, with the 3.6 equals, of course, 3,600 megahertz. Okay, so ignore the performance side of things first, because that isn't really the purpose of this video. The performance is pretty good so far, but uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. The issue I have is a couple. The first is the profile name itself is AMD Fanboy. Now, that probably, just from the fact that they're using a Titan X Pascal and the profile name, probably means they're not from AMD themselves. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's not, because at the end of the day, you know, we just don't know. But uh, there have been others from AMD that have linked, and one of them is something like Michael Young, or Michael Young Feng, or something like that. I'll look later on. But, um,. That's a lot less descript than AMD underscore fanboy. The second is that that possibly means it's a vendor or someone who's managed to get a very early engineering sample. For example, it could be a reviewer. It could be, you know, a chip that's fallen out of the back of a truck, so to speak. But I still got issues with that because generally when that happens and someone's leaking that amount of stuff, like if someone's got an early sample, you've actually got physically the images of the of the chip itself and they don't pull the benchmark so that's a bit weird uh, the fact that the benchmark has also been pulled also means a bit confusing uh, there is a couple of other bits and bobs the first is that the um, physical memory the logic cores and the physical cores all check out as does most of the options aside from half resolution terrain typically that's chosen as yes but the big one is the resolution. Now, if you look at the preset, they have the preset level on the right-hand side, almost at the top. It says preset level crazy 4K. But if you look under game configuration under resolution, so you've got version appy resolution, the resolution is listed at 0 0.0. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not working, but bear in mind other ashes of the singularity benchmarks were showing correct they were showing at like 1920 by 1080 or whatever so that is a bit weird um so it is a different driver revision so maybe there's something hinky with the uh sorry a different graphics card so maybe it's a bit hinky at the moment with this particular cpu with this particular version of titan uh, with this particular Titan, with this particular version of Ashes of Singularity, which is also 1.5. I'll get to that in just a second. And also, you know, the version of Windows plus a dozen other different things. It could have just errored out and the resolution wasn't shown properly. It's a possibility. Another cause for concern is that other images we've seen, uh, specifically... There have been a couple of leaked desktop ones. This is from AMD's various events. This is back when the rumors first emerged that AMD have got the chips at 3.9 gigahertz. You might recall that. The chip itself is listed as an AMD Eng sample, engineering sample, with a long prefix. So it's like, that's a bit weird because at the end it has an underscore N. Now that means that it does not have an integrated GPU. Uh, that's basically what underscore N means. But you'll notice in the case of this particular benchmark, it ends with 40 slash 36 underscore Y, which means that it does have integrated GPU, which is really bizarre. So it's possible it once again is misreading it, it's possible it's fake, or it's possible that we're seeing a different version of Ryzen entirely, perhaps one of the APUs. A couple of folks have also messaged, uh, mentioned, excuse me, especially on forums, the version of Ashes of the Singularity, with it being listed as 1.5, um, which is, by the way, the latest version. Now, that doesn't mean anything either way, because for all we know, the test was just run very recently, and uh, 
that's about it. But, you know, I mean, if you look at the date, it was done on January 25th, 2017. So it was only just a few days ago. So that isn't really indicative of one way or the other. That's just a version number. So I, I don't really want to call a version number that much of a big deal. The main thing that gets me, to be honest, is just the setting, the labelling of the GPU itself, uh, sorry, the CPU itself, and the fact that traditionally the train shading samples that we've seen typically have the number of 12 million. The performance indicator isn't necessarily one way or the other. Now, of course, folks are starting to perform you know, benchmarks of their own systems. For example, you might have someone who has, I don't know, like a 6700K or someone else who has like uh, a 5930K or whatever. And then they're going to start doing tests and try and figure out, is this roughly on the par? The problem we've got with that is quite simple. We just don't know the conditions of the test. So we don't know, for example, and I'm not saying this is the case by any stretch of the imagination, because it's possible it was done as a benchmark, but they also might be doing stability testing. So, for example, they might have had other instances of something else running in the background, which might have thrown off performance. Or it might be that this is a bare install of Windows, nothing else. It's just purely for benchmarking Ash of the Singularity. And that was it. In other words, they basically just cloned the OS directly on and then they did one install of Ashley the Singularity and that was all she wrote. It's very difficult to look at benchmarks like this and have something super duper meaningful. Um, and that's unfortunately just kind of the nature of the beast. It's also worth noting that Ashes of the Singularity as a benchmark also changes performance with different uh, versions. So, for example, 1.3 might be slightly faster or slightly slower than 1.2, and 1.4 might be... You get the idea. So, it, it becomes even trickier. Now, do I personally believe these are legit? Unfortunately, and I know I keep using that word, this is going to be one of those things where you're going to have to make your own decision on whether these are legitimate or not. To be really honest, actually, the singularity, at least in my opinion, isn't a particularly good benchmark because... Well, it, there's way too many other factors which can impact performance when it comes to CPU tests. And personally, I'd prefer to use other games or even better, non-games to actually benchmark CPUs. That's just my personal opinion. I'd prefer, for example, to see, um, I don't know, Prime-based uh, benchmarks or perhaps more Cine bench benchmarks or whatever. You get the idea. Up to you on these ones. Personally, I'm sceptical. I'm not saying they're fake, but I'm somewhat sceptical. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.